Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you are doing well, staying safe, keeping healthy, hydrated. And hopefully the weather is a little bit nicer wherever you are. And I uh, can get outside too. I'm, I'll have to go out a little bit later tonight. All right, so if you are joining for the first time, we've got some new folks in the house. Melanie's joining us. It's great. It looks like she's uh, been uh, checking out my channel on Twitch, some of the archives, and uh, now she's joining us over here. It's fantastic. We've got Ralph in the house, Peleg. It's great to see everyone. Glad you're doing well. And if this is your first time joining, hey, I'm Adam. And I'm a product designer at Angelist on the venture team. And uh, once a week, I'm here to stream, to share some things that I've found, to work on design projects, to answer questions. It's an easy way to uh, just have a consistent way of being available for people if they want help, want questions, or just want to watch someone do something. Because <laughs> that's actually... Uh, Quite fascinating just to watch people work. All right, so uh, that's me. Uh, tonight, uh, let me make a quick announcement. So I heard about this uh, Remote Design Week conference. It's five days. It's got a whole bunch of speakers and things. Cool speakers in crazy cool colors. And I was thinking that I'll, uh, one thing that would be fun is let's give away a conference pass. So if you're tuning in tonight, uh, this could be your lucky night. So we'll, uh, let me post the link in chat so you can check out the conference details if you want. And then a little bit later, let's do a little random drawing. I feel like doing something fun and special and I want to support uh, this kind of conference. I'm going to be busy working, but if anyone has some time, it's going to be great. I think you probably get access to recordings and things as well. So that's that. Uh, UX design contest update. So I haven't launched it yet. Uh, it's just like, just me not having a time to, to get it launched, but uh, knock on wood, uh, I'll launch this weekend and it's gonna have some relation to COVID and also um, some of the, the software that's become increasingly important or has increased dramatically in the number of users recently. The next thing I want to do, there are a few things in Product Hunt. Uh, if you've tuned in before, you'll know that I tend to uh, share new things that I discover on Product Hunt. And tonight, what I'd like to do is kind of a combo. So there's a few things I want to do. One is I want to practice using Figma a little bit more. I've, I've been kind of stayed away from Figma. I had very very early on I just had some like annoying experiences each time I come back to it I kind of use it and not really fall in love with it but recently I was playing with the auto layout I think it's called auto layout feature um, and I was like this is super cool so I'm interested in kicking the tires more on Figma um, and so I hope to incorporate that tonight so my thinking is that we'll check out these few things I think might be kind of interesting to share from Product Hunt. And then let's check out the experiences themselves and look for you know friction, look for opportunities to improve the experience. And then we can go into Figma and explore some of our ideas. Sound good? Let's get started with this, which eventy, I guess. So it kind of sounds like an event slash t-shirt making company create your own event app in minutes so i just saw that tagline and i thought hmm this could be cool 
Uh, and it could be also something nice to kick the tires on and think about uh, how we would iterate on it or how we would improve it. Hmm. I'm so, okay, so it's got a mobile app. It's got a website. Let's go ahead and check out the website. I'll put all the links in chat so it's easy to check out. Awesome. Even T. Eve, even T. The way they color this, these letters makes it, you know, it splits it up, right? So I guess even T. It sounds like a weird way to pronounce it. So maybe their branding needs some help. I don't know. I would, if it was all a solid color, I'd just call it eventy. I guess is how I would describe it. So there we go. There's some contrast that's maybe serving a function, right? If if it is even T, then kudos because that helps split it up. All right, so let's start for free. No, Google login, boo. All right, I'm gonna start capturing some screens. And I'm gonna start popping them into Figma just so we have some places. The one thing, I don't understand why, I guess Figma doesn't do it either and Sketch doesn't do it. Whenever I'm starting a new file, I always like my, maybe I'm just, maybe this is just weird, but I always like the very first thing that I'm working on like to be at zero, zero. And then I expand out from there. It's like, it's a small thing. Um, I also noticed that both design tools, Figma and Sketch, there's no way to increase the text size of the UI, which is kind of annoying because I have an issue with my eyes that makes things, sometimes it can get kind of blurry. And for example, this is this is very comfortable and easy to read, but as things get smaller, it's harder to read. And I don't know of any way to, actually, yeah. See, when we use the zoom, I can't actually influence the UI. All right, sorry to make you dizzy there. All right, so. New, oh, this is interesting. Just as checks as newsletter. <laughs> I guess that's that. This is really following my short beats good rule. It's like, all right, you've seen and en you've gotten seen enough things with newsletter. We're literally just going to put newsletter here. No pitch about it. No frequency. No nothing. I don't even know about this product. I always find it interesting. Why would someone want to sign up for the newsletter with zero interest? I don't know. I mean, I, I think I think if you're I think this makes the most sense. If you're just trying to compile an email list, great. Newsletter works. I mean I knew enough I knew what it was to uncheck it, right? So it seemed to serve its purpose. Alright. Let's go ahead and register. Your event will be ready in less than 10 minutes. Hmm. Does that mean they expect it will take less than 10 minutes to set up this event? Wow, this is kind of odd, right? We're in COVID times and it's it looks like it's asking to create a physical event. It's like, hmm, maybe not the best time to be coming up with these things. Oh, that's kind of cool. I can also play around with Figma's prototyping, which I ha have done pretty much zero stuff with, or at least it's been long enough that effectively zero. My awesome event. So it looks like that's actually the title. That's kind of nice. I mean, you can just go ahead and create something and presumably change it later. Let's call this uh, remote design week giveaway give giveaway just giveaway have a hyphen 
giveaway. So the way I check this, here's a little hack I do for UI text, is I'll search a word in quotes. And it looks like that's a definition, all one word. And just to check, so I get 218 million with giveaway. If I put a hyphen in it, I get 50 million. So definitely the more popular way is without a hyphen. So I'm going to go back and do that. This is kind of awkward. This looks very much like some food stamp label. 2304 2020. I'm guessing this is whoever created this is in Europe. Um, where they start with the day, the month, the year. I actually think the I like I actually like the uh, I would consider it the Asian way uh, because when I learn Chinese and Japanese, uh, they start with year, month, day. It's like really nice, just big to small. Um, the U.S. standard way, month, day, year. Yeah, that's cool too. I guess I guess it's very familiar. The day, month, year, smallest to biggest seems a little bit odd, but actually, I don't know. The more I think about it, smallest to biggest actually makes more sense, right? Because you have, presumably you have the context of what month it is. Like, you know, oh, it's April. So the most important piece of information is the day, right? The 23rd. If you just, if someone just says, hey, something's happening on the 23rd. And it hasn't, and it's not the 24th. Well, I guess if it's 23rd, people say it's today. Um, anyways. I think the best, the best way that I do, uh, that I recommend and I use in most situations is spelling out the month, at least when you're using English language, right? So this is, this is really focused on English language. If you have an English speaking audience, I like spelling out the month, depending on the UI constraints or the first three letters, right? So let's say May 8, 2020. Uh, a little bit more about dates in UI context. For most of the year, you don't actually, probably don't need the year. So one of my guidelines that I try to follow is if it's the current year, I won't include the year because it's obvious we're in the year. So if I say something's May 8th, great, that's when it happened. Uh, and then for past years, right? So let's say this was May 8th, 2019, then I would include the year. All right, when does this event start? Let's start it today. Oh, that was kind of odd. Okay, now it worked. Location, online. So we've got online fence supply, online psychic fair. That sounds fun. I'm giving away one pass ticket ticket to remote design week on tonight's stream. Create here's here's a definite opportunity for improvement. We can even hack this in the browser. Uh, I'm just going to take another screenshot just because I'm like, all right, let's take more screenshots. I'm going to turn off this preview editor. There we go. Now it's not going to keep popping up. Cool. It's like, ah, huh? wait a minute. Where did the. Okay, it's like I copied over something and replaced something. Um, where was my head at? Oh yeah, talking about hit targets. So Fitz Law says that uh, the speed at which we can interact with the UI element depends on the size. So the bigger something is, the faster we'll be able to kind of identify it, get there and hit it. So following that rule, a better button label would be something like create event you could also do like a full width button right Let's see if we can hack that 
and I'm just using dev tools to do this right here. So let's see, this is a button. There we go. So this is even better, right? So you saw those two options, like a little bit better, increase the increase the label, right? Adding text can increase the button size, and then you can even go full size for even easier. Oh, Peleg knows, he knows what's going on. No images in Figma, only shapes with image fill. Ah, okay. So that's like a little quirky thing that can cause you to override some of the things. Well, it does call the image, but yeah, I see it's fill image. I guess if it has an image fill, it calls it an image in the in the layers list. All right, let's go ahead and create this event. Let's see what happens. Spinning, and now I'm getting this big page. I'm gonna copy that, paste that. Be careful. I see when you when if I just go back. No, you do have to tap on something first, so. All right, so here's this event. We have a schedule, we have speakers, and we have workshops. Okay, so this is like a legit, com this is a conference. This is even more than an event, I would say. Uh, main hall, interesting, create your schedule. Hello there, what is this thing? <laughs> like a abstract parrot <laughs> hello there here you can add all your cool sessions and create the whole schedule hello there here you can create add all your cool sessions and create the whole schedule so this is another one of like my pet peeves or like where i start to see i think of uh ui content as less dynamic is if you were selling this to someone over the phone or you were introducing this, would you really like shout or emphasize with exclamation points? And this thing didn't introduce itself. So I'm like, I don't know what you are. I don't know who you are. Hello there. I'm... I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Pete the Parrot. Uh, create your schedule. Create your schedule by adding events. There we go. No. Oh, it's center aligned too, which gets kind of weird. Remove that. There we go. And remove it up here too. It's sometimes center text can work really well. Um, in general, like multiple sentences with this little string of text, it can work fairly well. Uh, but, and actually, oh, the alignment's off. Yuck. Uh, <laughs> I'm just noticing that oftentimes with left align, you create an actual much stronger design because you have a nice line for readers eyes to return to and it's more comfortable. MT says it's an owl. Is it an owl? Maybe it is an owl. I don't know. Pete the parrot, Oscar the owl, whatever this thing is. Uh, I guess it's kind of cute. Got it. I mean, did I really not know what would happen? I suppose if you don't mouse over, uh, what would be better? So I think the best thing would be this. Right, oh, what's the name of your hall? Wait a minute, here we go. Um, maybe we call it example session. Example session name, what does this mean? Create a new speaker. Start, ooh, oh no, it's gendered, ouch. Sorry, 
Sorry. To create a new speaker, start typing. It should be their name. So, all right, we're gonna definitely let's let's screenshot this so we can fix this. Oh, and then it didn't save my draft. Bummer. All right, we'll grab this one. Oh, now it's telling me. This is also super annoying, right? When if you click into something and click out of it, it's like ah, it's required. It's required. It's like yeah, chill out. You can tell me that on submit. So in general, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of these like uh, error messages and warnings and things that happen when you leave a field. It's kind of, it's called on blur. Uh, I much prefer having a manual button that the user can click and then process if there are any errors. Then you avoid this kind of situation. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna scoot it right over to it. All right, so example session. This is, a, so you can choose between lecture, workshop, and a break. Do you, do conferences usually call out breaks or do you just have a gap between lectures and workshops? To me, it seems a little bit odd to announce a break, but maybe people freak out if they don't have a break, especially with a remote conference though, like who can see you getting up to, from your computer? Like you can take a break whenever you want. Uh, anywho, uh, do they use AM or PM or do they use military or global time? So they use that. Okay, it's fine. Uh, I guess it's a little bit odd. Like how did how did they decide on these start times? Oh, I guess it's where I was. I see. I was I was in the time, so I clicked on something to be fair. All right. Example section. This is an example session. And let's have Pete the parrot. Oh, look, there he is. So I guess you can add multiple speakers. I'm gonna add Oscar the owl too. Okay. I'm gonna, oh, this is a good opportunity to take a screenshot. Plug it in. All right. Helix says maybe breaks about food. Yeah, Melanie, Hall is is odd, right? So let's uh, let's check out what advanced is. Upload a file. Enter your live stream URL. Okay. I still haven't, all right, let me do this. So I keep, every time I type, have to type this in, I say that I should make some sort of macro. So I'm gonna make a macro for this. So I'm gonna create a tech shortcut and I'm going to, uh, I don't wanna do that. Uh, I wanna duplicate one of these things. Duplicate. And let's just say YouTube slash. Oops, no, this is what I want. This is the name of it. This is a YouTube channel URL. Okay, and I'm gonna type YouTube URL. Let's make it shorter, YT URL. And then what's gonna be pasted in is my YouTube because that's a lot to type all right that looks good now let's test it out boom yay enter valid 
Oh, burn. <laughs> this is a this is a Twitch only uh, stream. <laughs> and they do not like they don't like the YouTube. I suppose this is actually a channel, but I mean, that's how you access the live stream. So I don't really know. I guess I don't really know what the stream URL is. Let's check it out. Find it out. Oh, this is going to be. Okay, so if I copy this, copy link address. Nice. Let's try this. Ah, okay, okay. So it's not it's not what I thought. I thought it was like discriminating against YouTube, but really I just didn't have the weird random live stream URL. What kind of files can you images basically. Okay. All right. I don't I don't know why you'd enter a file and I also don't know why are there just two things under advanced? Oh, it didn't save. All right, super frustrating. I have to do that all over again. That's so, that sucks. Example session. At least these, oh, these were saved. But I, I said, uh, it's actually, I see. Yeah, that's right, it's not green. It's Pablo, I guess. Pablo, the pair, what, should we do Pablo the parakeet? I guess he looks really exactly the same as the other parrot though, so. Pablo the parrot. Giving away an event ticket on stream, advanced. I think I still have it in my clipboard, great. All right, what I want, I'm trying to do is just save it. Here we go, save a screenshot, nice. So we created an example session. I don't know why it doesn't start like this. Then you don't need that little parrot thing with its silly message. Like why do you need that? Um, you could still have it welcoming you and like uh, ask, you know, giving a link to a tour or hey, do you want to watch a three minute video that will show you everything you need to get started? Like those are certainly valid things, but really to get started, if I just saw that there's this example session here, then it lets me know that, oh, I can mouse over this. Like I can do things here. Whereas if you don't have this, it just looks like this empty thing. Hall is super weird. Who said that? Mel Melanie, right? Yeah. I think Hall is totally awkward and confusing. All right, we'll get a few more screenshots and then let's, oh no, I think I overrode something, didn't I? Yep. Gotta be, gotta be careful. So that's annoying. All right. So this, this, while I found something I, I love about Figma, I also found something I still think is annoying. We'll work more on the love stuff in a bit. So yeah, add hall. What do they say about that? What's the name of your hall? I I don't my I don't have a hall and I don't have a name the hall doesn't have a name. So this one takes just the Twitch channel, which is kind of is basically kind of interesting. So it allows it here. Nope, no it doesn't. Okay, so it does discriminate against YouTube in not allowing the channel. It allows the Twitch channel, but not a YouTube channel. Interesting. I 
Yeah. Add a hall. Yeah. What is this? I guess this is for if you're in a if you're in a physical location. Maybe it's the room. Ooh, yeah, Hogwarts. Hog. Is it Hog? Is Hogwarts like Hogwarts with an S and no apostrophe, or is it Hogwart apostrophe S? Like there was Hogwarts or Hog. Words. Hogwarts. No apostrophe. Great. Clear that up. Can you save with the error? Interesting. So you can save with the error. Yeah, I guess this is maybe if you have different rooms. Maybe Hall is up in some country. They, It's common to call rooms halls. How many halls do you have in your home? Um, and then you can add, uh, pun time, a great opportunity for puns. Halloween. Let's see how many, anyone else got a nice hall pun? Help me name my hall. Yeah, I think that's what it is, right? These are essentially like different rooms or stages, maybe, uh, depending on the type of venue. These are like, these are different locations because you can have multiple locations with multiple sessions going on at once. Cool. Great. I guess maybe... You know what would be a better experience? I'm going to... Let's capture this just so we can show what the current thing is. It strikes me that there's an opportunity to remove a step. Number one is, why don't you just start like um, room four? Let me edit all these. Why don't you start the UI like this? What is, oh, that's a trash can. I didn't even recognize what this is. So I zoom in, I see it. I think if, if it were filled, right? If the trash can was a filled solid icon, it'd be more recognizable. But why do you do save and then you have a icon? It's like you have so much room. It's ridiculous. Just put delete or remove. Um, let's see, does it have, let's see, does it, will it catch us and ask us if we're sure or will it just delete it? Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> well, all right, this one's this one's super ugly and kind of janky. This one's begging to be redesigned. I do, I will give it credit for one thing though, right? So it does, like, let's say I got interrupted, blah, 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 chatting with someone, come back to it. If it just said, do you really want to delete this hall? And it didn't tell me the hall name, I'd be like, oh, which, which, which one did I click on again? I better not. So I will give it kudos that it does include the name. The format is weird, right? And kind of ugly, but it does do the really important thing of not making people remember what they clicked on. So basically, I think this is this is how it should start out. I guess maybe it depends on your your viewport size. Um, but why in the world don't they start out like this? I'm gonna rename this temporarily so I ha can take a screenshot. This is how this app should begin because it. It lets you know a bunch of functionality. It lets you know, oh, I can create this kind of conference and they shouldn't call it events. It should be called a conference thing. It doesn't have anything to do with events. It should be called conferency. If, if I was responsible for naming it. Uh, it's about conferences. It can be a remote conference, which is super weird because they have this map and location thing that you pick, which is 
just doesn't make sense at all. Um, but assuming that's a physical, oh, I guess you can have it. You can have live streaming and a physical location. All right. Yes, fair use case. I guess in COVID times it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but by having by planting the seed of a bunch of rooms, you automatically communicate to people about the functionality, right? By having an example session, you can you know that oh this is I add sessions here. So the default state there's so much that this app could do just by being more thoughtful about the default state that would help people get going even faster than that little parrot with its message. Uh, let's screenshot this because I want to use this as my kind of template. I'll be able to compare and contrast. Let's see, what's the opening screen if we go back? So just to kind of remind yourself, right? This is what the actual app experience was. And then this is what I'm proposing, right? Set people up with a few things. Even better, I have it. Can I duplicate this? No, there's no way to duplicate. Um, even better would be create a bunch of sessions in different rooms because it would be easy to uh, destroy these or remove these. Um, but then you'd save people the work of like clicking and then it's just a matter oh oh you can't you can't move by dragging oh that's that's really unexpected and super annoying um you can slide these around but you can't reorder i think one of the problems is when you ha when you have a tool like this that mimics a familiar tool like Google Calendar or a calendar program where you can move things around uh, easily, it's it's quite frustrating that you can't. That means I have to literally go in and edit the time instead of just being able to drag and drop. So I get it, uh, you know, it's less complexity. I think something to keep in mind with all these things you discover on Product Hunt is many of them are like, brand new thing someone's just built you know it's basically been really bootstrapped so it's not necessarily a huge team with huge resources highly polished with tons of testing uh, and that's why there are so many of these opportunities but we can share this out with the eventy folks in product hunt and hopefully they can get some inspiration so the ability to remove a room i think would be great I don't think there's any reason you need to see these pencils. I would just show this on hover. I'm not gonna hack it. Uh, can't do can't do hover state hacks as easily. Well, yeah, I can. Anywho, let's go look in some other area. I'm actually gonna duplicate this just because I don't want to lose all these rooms in case we go back to it. The loading thing is obvious so that was clear so speakers so here i have speakers oh now it's first and last name i don't remember that it asked me about that before what can i do can i talk about pablo the parrot interesting that it doesn't just display oh let's go back i guess let me i keep forgetting to get screenshots Let's do screenshots for maybe, let's explore for maybe five more minutes and then let's, let's do some work. Here's another thing, like you could just be on the first, this could be the default view as well, right? Have a speaker selected. So it's clear that, oh, you can, here's where you can edit these things. Like why make someone click on something? Peleg agrees, moving to reschedule. If you had to reschedule a single session, you'd end up changing a lot of times for a lot of sessions. Yep. All right, company, it's funny. Just put something in there. 
position captain <laughs> bio what show more yeah like i guess i don't really understand the point of i don't understand the decision to um hide things what's the point like it's easy to scroll it's obvious it's obvious that there are additional things there this is offline i don't know what the offline thing is bio email phone number web web maybe website linkedin facebook twitter country language okay I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna get this. Okay, one more minute. Let's just see. I'm gonna curious to see how it displays. So let's enter some stuff. The shadiest parrot you ever did meet. And this is gonna be, this is Pete out these Google preview things. All right, not gonna enter any more stuff. And I don't, I don't know that there's really a reason to close it. I guess maybe it will show some other things. Captain's left shoulder. Ooh, good one, Pelly. I like it. Uh, okay, cool. Let's let's just take it from here, and let's let's do some stuff. And I want to play around specifically with the auto layout feature for Figma. So let's create a new new event window so first i'm going to create a input field so i'll make a rectangle and i'll give it a background and i'll give it a stroke which is a border but you can't call it border because you got to differentiate Stroke is a valid term too. It's just more about like vector software than uh, UI. Uh, and then let's give it a radius. It's hard to see when it's changing. There we go. We'll give it a radius of four pixels. Oops. Um, cool. Oh, you know what? I should have started with text. I forgot. I should start with the smallest for making an efficient auto layout. I should start with text first. So let's do that. Remote design week giveaway. Ugh. All right, so here's something I hate about. I don't know if this works the same way in Sketch or Figma, but maybe they both do this. But it's annoying as heck when I think I'm modifying the text and for whatever reason, I'm like in some other mode. Now it seems to be working. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, here's where I think it's, is it Shift A? Yeah, Shift A. We'll put you in the auto layout mode and then we have our padding and we can add the fill and we can add the stroke and we can add the rounded corners and let's let's do 16 16 and 8 sure how did 8 and 8 look Oh, 
12 and 12. Yeah. 12 and 8. There we go. Okay, cool. Here's our. Right? Selecting and dragging stuff is annoying in Figma. Like, I clearly have my mouse over the frame thing. I'm clicking on it and I'm dragging and I get what's behind it. It's like, I, even though this thing is behind, as long as this image is behind it, I can't move it. So, it's like annoying stuff like that. I suppose I can lock it, right? That would be. People are shouting at me, lock the lock it, just lock it. Okay, I'll lock it, yeah. It's it's still not actually that easy. Alright. Uh anyways, so that's cool. So now we have like one part of the auto layout. Now what I can do is I can duplicate the field. Oh you know what I should let me do a little bit more first. We'll expand on this. Let's get a label going. So this is event. And this, is, this thing is really about a conference. So let's call it conference uh, name. Great. I'll add in four pixels of spacing. And now I can add this. Come on. This. You know, I just noticed that's super ugly is my cursor. My cursor looks really nice on my MacBook Pro, but on my second monitor, it's it's really a low res. Anywho, what was I working on? Here we go. So, yeah, this is all I need. Actually, this, oh, here we go. Is it gonna work? Yeah. I'm gonna put that down to 12. Okay, so now I've got the label and the frame. Now I can do Shift A again. And now I've created this auto layout around it. Cool. And I can duplicate this. And I'll get a few labels in a row. Let's see, one, two, three, four. There are four. The, the text area one's a little bit different, but that's fine. Let's just duplicate this. Oop, wrong one. Let's duplicate this again. And we'll do it one more time. Okay, so now I've got all these things. I'm really bummed I can't use my keyboard shortcut for aligning these things, but maybe there's another keyboard shortcut. Is there? Align left, option A. Nice. All right, so now I've got all these things grouped together. Now what I can do space them away and then I can do shift a again so again I give this big thing an auto layout and now I can give it padding and a background color and let's give it a drop shadow or box shadow whoops I'm gonna do how do I do multiples? I can add another one. Yes, there we go. Eight, eight. So let's round the corners on this box. So four inside, so we'll do eight outside. And I'm not gonna, what is this going on? Do you see that here? What did I do? I applied a box shadow on these things too. That was weird. Okay. And actually what I should do, uh, because we're trying to show best practices and help people 
work efficiently. I should turn this frame into a symbol, a component. So this is a component now, and then these should really be instances. So I'm gonna delete all these, and then I'm going to duplicate these symbols. So now I have different instances of symbols. I think I can override them just fine. If I wanna change the conference name to uh, conference, and actually a lot of conferences are multiple dates. So how would I include a start date and an end date? Conference start date. Conference end date. Conference name. Conference start, conference end. Maybe I don't need date. It's obvious from the text here. Let's do April 23rd, 2020. 3030, whew, not gonna be around for that one. Oh, this is interesting. How do I, okay, I see I can do that. <laughs> uh, I think you can, can you set a min? A min width. How about on the master? Min width. Alex says all conferences are events. Not all events are conferences. That's true. Um, but this doesn't seem like this doesn't seem like any I think they're using event incorrectly. So I don't believe that this is a product for creating events. To me, an event is literally just this. Like an event is something on Eventbrite. It's got a name, it's got a date, it's got a time, maybe it has a location, has a description, and it it's it's an event. A conference is a collection of events or a series. Of events and that's what I think this product is all right so already I'm getting stuck trying to figure out okay shoot um, my my maybe I used auto maybe I did not use auto layout in a smart way and that I need to I need to create uh, I need to create this input at this fixed width because once I start changing the label then it's dynamically shifting on me and that's not ideal so I'm kind of going back to this again <laughs> now I'm back to this thing I can get some dimensions from this height 35 247 okay so 247 what did I say 35 35, yes. So I can do that, and then I can grab this. And stick it in here. All right. So this is this is what my symbol should be. So I'll duplicate this. Put it up here. Eight, eight, twelve. Great. Drag the text box to set a fixed width. Okay, that works here. Uh, but how come it? Oh, oh. I don't remember how long it was. Nice. So there is. There's a way to do it. Fairly easily. Just no way in the me menu, I guess. All right. Thanks, Peleg, for the shortcut. I appreciate it. Is there, is there such thing as groups? Did I just group this thing together? Yeah, I did. Okay. 
So that's backup. Okay, cool. That That's excellent to know. Uh, convert start. And now I should be able to change this. April. Let's see, tomorrow's 24, 25, 26. Let's say end Sunday. 26. That was a uh, location. I think I'm gonna put start date. I don't think I need to include conference again. End date. And location. Online psychic fair. Charlotte. NC. Cool. And then let's do a description. And then for this one, I think it makes sense to reduce the text, the font size. And let's see, I don't have that actually written out. I'm giving away one ticket to remote design week on tonight's stream. Yay. And then we need a button. So what I can do is I can create the button. I can create the button now using the text. So create And let's see, what do I call this thing? I almost, if the conference name is limited to characters, it might be good to say create remote design we give away. So I'll input the, I'll input the, and I like how it happens like magic. Like this is some cool thing with the auto layout. So I'm really curious to see how Figma scales um, and kind of support scaling and if it keeps up its speed. Also, hey, Peleg, have you, do you have experience working with the uh, browser-based Figma versus the desktop? Do you have uh, any experience with that and can shed any light on which one has worked better for you? That's something I'm also curious about. So this one, I'll do Shift A to create auto layout. And now I've got my button and I can fill it with the color oops wait a minute oh that's oh that's not the fill I take that back let's let's cancel this how do I get out of this can I kill this thing no I'll just command Z oh let's see nice so they Okay, so fill, I can do control C, it's the same shortcut. And then let's set the text. Why does it call it selection? Selection colors, oh, this is the thing I've selected of this auto layout, and these are the colors available. So I could change it just for this selection, I see. But I actually wanna change this. And let's make it bold too. Let's do the same thing. Bold. And let's make our button nice and round so nobody will hurt themselves on the corners. And then I can do the same thing, right? For the text, I can drag it. it doesn't really snap. I wish it would snap or show some lines visually to let me know I got the right width. And then I can center the text. Cool. The more I look at this, the more I think it's just gonna be more helpful to say create conference. It's shorter and I'll let people focus. Ooh, the, the text, the font size. Let's make that nice and big. There we go. Gotcha, Peleg. Yeah, me too. Figma is not my primary tool, but 
because of this auto layout thing, I thought, all right, let's like, let's kick the tires on it so I can be, you know, comfortable in it and understand like when I might want to use it. All right, so we really just built something. We didn't, I mean, it doesn't have a ton of improvements, right? We have, I mean, we did have a start and end date. I guess that's, that's an improvement. Um, we've made the button longer. We've simplified. Yeah, I don't know why it needs a map. I guess we removed the map because I don't want to create a map. Um, I wonder, there's probably a plugin for Figma to generate a map. Um, I see. I think things are too small. Oh, whoops. That's not what I want to do. I want to go into this text, right? Yikes. There we go. Do want to give things more room. I wish there was a number over here that I could use to do that. Why what? desk is small why is description smaller the text i think oh i want i guess you mean maybe the the area so i think this is something actually that won't i can't do well let's see oh nice i can cool so i can come in here and edit one of the instances and you can't, oh, interesting. You can't, you can't set a discrete, like, top. I can't make the top eight and the bottom 32. It all has to be the same. Uh, which, let's see what happens if I, yeah, it'll look a little weird. I made the font size smaller because I think there's, more text and I thought if you have like a lot of text that it doesn't really make sense to be large hopefully someone has written this outside I think it's probably a poor practice to uh, create a conference description right in this tool so my expectation is that someone will have they'll get it from someone else uh, or they will already have it crafted outside. And so when you paste it in, uh, it's fine for it to be small. That's that's the thinking behind that. Um, so it doesn't look like Figma has an easy way for me to figure this one out to like change this. And really it's that's fair because these are like single line inputs and this is a text area. So. I think I can break out of this, detach instance, ooh, I detached. Um, and then this thing is still an auto layout. So auto layout, you can't separate the top and bottom padding, which is no good. So, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to use this strategy I believe so I'm gonna have to do something like this make this big thing put this thing here so I can copy the text and basically make a new symbol. You can drag the bottom border of the text. Huh, okay, let me try that. Ah, interesting. So let me back up. Let's see how I really, let's push on how far we can get with just this instance. Is this an instance yet? Nope. Now is it? Nope. Now it is. Okay, cool. So let's... Let's go back to 
the auto layout. So I think it was eight. Okay, and then Peleg's got this genius idea of grabbing. Hmm. Well. Maybe it doesn't work in the instance. I guess I still have to detach it, but then I can, I can make it more quickly. I think that's the thing. Okay, so now, now I can drag it. So that sucks. It would be, I guess it would be cool if the instance could support this functionality as well. Okay, and this thing, why did this thing get small? This is an auto layout and we just need to pick the text. Yeah, I don't like, I wish it would snap. It's like a little knit because if I want everything to be the same width, how do I do that? Can I select it all? I suppose I probably can. So let's say it's three, let's just do 400. Ooh, ouch, no, no, no good, no good. So if we do this, now let's try it, 400. Huh, didn't, didn't exactly work, what's going on? Oh, because I don't have 12. If I do 12, I need to have the same, I need to follow the same rules. Okay, cool. So this is my new, this is my create new conference. And let's change the text here too. All right. All right, Figma's being weird. I'm like trying to, oh, it's locked. That's what's going on. It's like, why can't I select this thing? Now this thing's already a frame, right? I missed my artboard concept from sketch. Is this a frame or is it not a frame? Click on F. It didn't do anything. But it's it's annoying because I feel like a frame is an artboard. So, all right, whatever. What's the dimensions of 1729 by 978? All right, let's do this. 1729, 978. And then let's get the background. This color, cool. And now I can copy this, paste it here, nice. And then I can say, create new event or create new conference and I can make this one much bigger I think 32 great frame looks like the pound sign yeah Although, yeah, I guess depending on if you have auto layout applied. Okay, cool. So there's my, there's my idea with some slight tweaks and changes. The map thing isn't as good. The map thing is kind of helpful though, right? Is it? I don't know. The zoom maybe isn't that helpful. If I'm really familiar with the location, I mean, all this tells me is that it's somewhere near Costco. I don't know for sure. I guess the road confirmation, maybe I know the highway if I'm in North Carolina, these highways make sense. But if I'm not familiar with the area, the map really doesn't do anything for me. So, all right, let's look at maybe one other area. What was something here? I think this would be fun to make with the auto layout. So let's, let's do this as well. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this frame and bring it down here 
And I'm just gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna scrap all this. I'm gonna do my building right here where I'm close. So this I'm the way that I'm I'll show the way that I'm thinking about this now, and I think it will be helpful to to do this kind of exercise as you're thinking about building an auto layout component. So what I'm thinking about are chunks. So I'm thinking about this as a chunk. I'm thinking about this as a chunk. And it's really about just stacking chunks. This is a chunk, this is a chunk. This, this is like a chunk and can you have things in an auto layout? So this is also, this is a nested thing on its own. So this is like a chunk. This is a different auto layout with a chunk and another chunk. So it's all these pieces coming together. Does that make sense? So I think I can start with the text. Let's let's try this out. Let's see if this chunking approach really helps me. I'm going to simplify as well. Delete Halloween conference or this is a room. Delete Halloween room. Do we need to say I guess we'll have the name delete. Do we need room in it? I don't think so. Okay, so I've got delete Halloween. So I think if I make this an auto layout and I do 32, 32, and let's fill this with some bright goodness. Let's give it eight pixels rounding. And Cool, so I think I can now do this like icon. What's gonna be the easiest way for me to add icon? How do I make a triangle shape? Polygon, here we go. Let's just recreate this icon. I'm gonna grab the same color, so try to keep everything, you know, follow some of the design stuff. Can I round the corners? Nice, I can. So I'm gonna do that. It just makes it a little friendlier, right? It's not gonna poke your eyes out. Uh, people like that about shapes. That's why we, we much prefer rounded shapes. And then I can do a text here. Bold, and then I'll make that white. And let's see, I kind of combine that in this thing. It's kind of looking like it. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. That may be too big. We'll find out very soon. I think it works. So let's group these things together. The only thing I don't like, let's see, does Figma have a convert to outlines. How can I vectorize this thing? Vector text. What? Are you kidding me? There's got, it's gotta be here somewhere where I transform this text into vectors. It's not obvious. It's not where I'm looking which would be in the text menu. None of these things mean vectorize this. Nothing in vector. Object, maybe, object. Outline stroke. Could be this. There we go, so that's what it's called. Outline stroke. Great, now I've got this. Why is this thing? So I don't know why this thing takes up so much room, but let's see, can I do the same kind of thing? Outline stroke, nice. And then I can align these. 
Ooh, maybe not. Maybe maybe we need to do some visual fixing alignment. Okay, cool. Let's. Uh, these are already grouped together. How do I make it fit in here? I thought there was a way where I could kind of pull this in. There we go. But I want it to stack. And so the way I do that is somewhere here. No, it's with this frame. Horizontal. I do vertical. Boom. And then I can pick the space between elements like that. Cool. And now I'm going to make this other auto layout. We're going to have these two buttons. All right, so let's start with a button. Make a text. Say, delete. Delete this. And I guess yes is pretty simple. Um, The color, we're going to use this document color. And then we're going to give this a smart layout and give it a fill and round the corners. I do have, oh, you're saying I can reuse the button? Is that the idea? I don't know if I made it into a symbol or a component. I can, though. Create component. This component is named button now. Uh, duplicate it. Steal it away down here. Where am I working? Over here. Oops, I lost it. Where did it go? <laughs> duplicate it again. I'll try cutting it this time and doing pasting because I, do I don't see where it went. This is funny. All right. How come sometimes it lets me put it on there? Here's the frame. <laughs> I don't know why it's below it. Oh, it, it is below it. Okay, now let's, now let's try. Hmm. It needs to be above. Yeah, so I've got it above the frame, but how come it doesn't give me the nice UI for inserting it? What if I cut it and select this and paste it? Okay, so weird little things like that. So uh, cut paste works very nicely. Um, dragging, not so much. Let's... Let's do a stroke. Four pixels. This red color. Maybe just do two. The fill will be white. The selection, I guess that's this color, will be this red. Nope. <laughs> uh, how do I pick this one? Here we go. Ooh, we got to get rid of that fill and fast. There we go. All right. So this will be yes. And then, hmm, let's see if we can do this. I need to resize it, though. And I don't see how that's possible without detaching. So I think this is going to be a de detach instance because I want to get these handles. And that seemed like the only way. Well, let's back up. I'm going to I'm going to give it one more try. So if I pick this thing Nope, the width is locked. This width, aha. Uh, nope, nope, can't do anything with that. Although it looks like it's editable, but I can't actually change it. 
Oh, I can type something in it. But it just keeps going back to 400. Hey, D. Welcome, welcome. Hey, by the way, did you know? I'm, I don't know if you already got a ticket, but uh, tonight I'm giving away a ticket to the remote design week thing that you shared with me. I think it looks really cool. So uh, before we wrap up, we will uh, award a lucky winner with that. I'm doing some kind of live design surgery. We're playing around with this like conference tool and I'm kind of showing off and also just playing around for my own education. Uh, Figma's auto layout tool and figuring out how do you, how can you resize things? It's like, there's really no, no way. I, I, I don't see any path, so I'm gonna detach. So if I detach, then I can go do this. And I can set this with, let's say 100. And then, and then I can duplicate this button. And, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to wrap this in its own auto layout and then duplicate and then go to this. Which frame is this? I'm losing track of all the, the auto layout frames I have. Okay. So that's this. So I can duplicate here and then here, pick horizontal. Boom. There we go. We're getting there. You need to create a button symbol that is resizable, not fixed. All right. How do you do that? <laughs> How did I create this other button? I suppose the text I set to something. Well, let's say for this one here. So I've got this, uh, I've got this like potential button here set up. Uh, let's give it, let's do 24 and eight. Okay, so presumably this is a button that can be resized. Create a component, so there's a new component now. I duplicate it and I guess it will resize if I type things. Maybe not, it's not even resizing. Detach the original button symbol. Double click the text box, bottom right point. All right, hold on here. Detach original button symbol instance. Well, okay, so let me back up. So I have an instance here. Detach it. Double click the text box bottom right point like this. Make this into a component. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, uh -huh. uh, it's different. <laughs> but okay, so that's that's a way you can wait a minute. Why isn't the outside? Oh, now it is. I think there was just like a little, a little bug. Wait a minute. No, this is no good. Do you see that? This thing is not, something's off. This thing is not being centered because the boundaries go all the way over here. But the auto layout thing doesn't look like it's being respected. <laughs> Not what you meant. <laughs> Double click the text box, bottom right point. I'm lost. Maybe you can uh, send me a little screencast. Anyways, I think we've 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 got a a usable solution. We'll just kill this poor button, put it out of its misery. Um, and I think what I can do is change the selection colors. Nice. And I can just put in, change the text to no. No, yes. No, noise, noise. Cool. So this is effectively this, right? This is my, oh, and there's that thing that drives me insane. I can't pick any of the stuff I made 
if there's an image behind it. This thing alone drives will drive me nuts. And another annoying thing, it looks like there's no way to just automatically make a frame wrapped around a screenshot. Like working from screenshots is probably, you know, I don't know, at least 60 to 70 percent of the time I'm trying to do something quick. Um, I'll work from a screenshot because that's the most accurate. Anyways, okay, that's locked now. Whoop, nope. It's still hard to grab things, right? Like I'm inside it and I can just draw a box. I literally have to grab this little label. Or I can grab, or I can grab something inside it, okay. But I can't, oh, now it's working. <laughs> I think this has ki kind of been my experience with Figma previously or things like, kind of work. It is very responsive and fast, I'll have to admit. I'm not noticing any slowness, although I don't really have a whole lot going on either. Let's paste this, uh, let's center it nicely, and then let's add this overlay. So I think I can just create a big rectangle and pull it there. And let's see, what's the shortcut for moving a layer down in Figma? Is it command down? Nope. Is it option down? Nope. Is it, what is it? I don't know what it is. I'll just drag it. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. And then... Oh, actually, I should use the image. Hmm. Ralph's asking, what do you think about using a combination of illustrations and real images? Do I think that breaks consistency or is it fine? I think it really depends, Ralph. <laughs> you know, I bet you're so annoyed when I say that. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I think that um, if you can be consistent, right, with your combination of illustration and real image. And let's see if I can find an example. I'm trying to think of, I feel like... Uh, maybe type form. I feel like old MailChimp. Old MailChimp uh, graphics. Let's see if we can find some screenshots of old MailChimp stuff. I feel like they used to do it. Uh, I'm I'm not seeing it. Type form, that's an image. Uh, I don't know if there's a name for this, combining photo with illustration. It's almost like drawing on top of photos, right? With different elements. This, here we go, here's one. So like this kind of thing. Uh, this kind of thing, how do I make this bigger? It's not gonna let me, here we go. So here's here's this Pinterest with a bunch of, I think like illustration photograph combos. So if that's the style that you're going for and that's the like the illustration that fits in your illustration guidelines and your brand guidelines, cool. If you only have illustration and you try to introduce this thing, that could definitely break consistency. So when I say depends, it really depends on what are the what are the rules or the guidelines for uh, the illustration or photo part of your design system. I hope that helps. I think it's really fun. I think it can I think it's great. I, I like it a lot personally. It's just a personal taste thing though depending on what you're trying to do, it may be more or less effective. Let's see, how can I have these things spaced more apart? Here we go. 
Wait a minute, horizontal. Oh, what's going on here? So have this horizontal and I can't, oh, now it's working. Yeah, I wanna create more space in between it. Let's give a healthy dose of space. There we go. So there's no, not gonna be any accidental um, touching there, right? Oh, what's going on here? Why is this thing all funky? There we go. Ooh, let's give it a shadow. Does this one have a shadow? That's another odd thing. It doesn't have a shadow, right? This thing is displaying in the air and it doesn't have a shadow. Give it a shadow. Give it two shadows. Let's give it big, bigger shadows. There's one and then the other one. Oops. There we go. Ralph says he means some, for example, some pages use illustrations, some use real images. Oh, uh, sure. I mean, I think that can work. It just, again, it depends on what are the guidelines. If you wanna make some guidelines around that, I'd say like, go make some guidelines. I'll try to think of an example. So like, design contest I've updated to use open peeps, right? For most illustrations. And then an example of a photo, right? The screenshot of this web page, like that's an example of a photo, right? That's not an illustration. They can, they, I think it seems to fit into the design system. I mean, I'm kind of the boss of the design system. Uh, so it's easy for me to say that, um, but yeah. I think that um, I would love to see the example so I have a better sense of what's going on. I think it's important to be thoughtful about what you're doing. For example, I think it would be inconsistent, right, Ralph, if I had photographs here for the winners, right? If here I had photographs and then back here I have all illustrations, I think that would break the rules of consistency. Right, if I had a, a stock photo here, right, that would that would not follow the guidelines, and that would be uh, that would be kind of abrasive and not flow. So maybe I hope that helps. I think it it depends on the context, and I think setting clear guidelines makes sense. It can be very helpful. For example, whenever we talk about people on UX Design Contest, we always use this uh, design illustration library, this illustration library. We never show photographs of people, right? But we do show photographs in like screenshots or products or digital things. All right, gang, I'm getting, I'm getting a little tired and a little hungry. So let's let's do this uh, let's do this giveaway. Let let me first make sure I have things in a, a format where I can share them. And actually, humor me one thing. Let me let me do one thing. Ah, I'm trying to move this button out of the way. Let me get to this delete page. I think I have it open here. Oh, uh, it says room one now. Okay, so let me just change this. Oh, this will be interesting. What if I change the name of it and then put delete? Ha, huh, interesting. It doesn't, doesn't save the change. So I'm gonna call this Halloween. I'm gonna save that first. And then what I wanna do is do this delete thing. And I want to hide I want to hide this element so I can use it as the background. So I can go over here and click hide. Whew. 
magic. And then I'll copy this. And then what I can do is I can use this as the background like that. And then I'm actually going to get kind of picky just because if I, I'm going to be sharing this publicly, I want it to look nice. I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking with the shadows. And I think I'm even going to add one more. Just so it's like really nice and smooth. And cool. So now I've got this thing. I've got this thing. Ooh, now I can check out the export functionality too. So I've got two, I've got uh, three things to share. So I can make a little uh, post and whoop and share these three things. So I've got the create a new conference instead of event where I have start and end date, right? Or these can be optional. Ooh, I should add an optional call out. I'm just gonna make it simple and say optional. Uh, so it doesn't have to have an end date. It could just have a start date and then I guess that's assumed when it's end. Well, actually no. If it ends on the same day, I think people can just pick put it in. Maybe that'll be the default. Uh-oh. I can type, but my backspace is not working. Uh-oh. Oh, man. What do I do? What do I do? Is it just Figma being weird? Will it work now? Yep. It's Figma being weird. Okay, so Figma is the mo definitely like way glitchier than Sketch. At least my experience of this browser version. It's way glitchier, like things just randomly don't work. And then you try it again. Pelg asks, how will I share it with the company? I think what I'll do, I'll post in Product Hunt. I'll say, hey, I checked out your uh, event creation thing, the conference creation thing. I thought it's pretty cool. I was talking about it on my stream. You can check it out here. And here are like three ideas I have for you. I think the strongest idea by far is this. The, the default new screen scenario. So, right, the current one is you get this like empty room thing without any examples and this weird like really funky parrot owl gumby creature thing. Uh, who's telling you random stuff with exclamation points. Um, and it's just super silly. Uh, or you could do something like this and people think like, dang, this thing has like power. It's kind of familiar. I can see I can make like a session and stuff. And I just want to like dive in and like get creating. Whereas this is kind of like, wah, wah, wah. you know, it's a little underwhelming. So I think this is by far my strongest proposal. And then, yes, exactly. I, oh, that sound, that didn't sound very piratey. I'm not going to try that again, though, because I think I hurt my throat. Uh, and then the last one is just this delete thing. This thing's kind of ugly. Uh, the formatting is kind of weird. Um, and so I came up with like a little bit simpler pattern. This actually should probably be a little bit darker. Let's go with a darker gray. There we go. That'll want to make sure it's got decent contrast. Um, so it's a little bit like styling, make the hit targets a little bit bigger and simplify the ask, right? Delete Halloween is way easier to grok than do you really want to delete hall colon Halloween? No question mark. All right, so that's that. So I'll tweet it out later. Mawin. Mao, is it Mawin? You saw a Chinese restaurant redesign challenge on the contest website. Yes, that was the very first one. Would you just give them three PNG files or share a Notion page with explanations? Oh man, Pelagir, like, if I had uh, 48 hours in the day, uh, 
yeah. <laughs> I think it's just going to be a tweet with a, maybe a threaded tweet. Can I do a like a tweet thread? I feel I feel so stupid. I, Twitter is the one app that I think makes me feel the most stupid of any app. Every time I want to like do something like, oh, I saw someone who like threaded these tweets together. Like, how do I do that? I'll end up like replying to my thread and then the reply is in my feed like above the original thing and it's all messed up. But yeah, I the simple, simple, small thing. I don't know how to tweet. Like I've been tweeting for I don't know how many years and I feel like I'm still an idiot when it comes to Twitter. It's like, you know how many designers they have working on that stuff? Like, can't can't they make it simpler? I don't know. You want to do the challenge but don't know where to start before redesigning the web page. Hey, Mowen, do you want to hit me up? Uh, I'll put my email address because I want to uh, help you out and follow up. But I'm, I'm just trying to wrap up here real quick. Um, so if you email me uh, with your question, I can I can definitely help you out. Um, and also, I'm going to be launching a contest uh, this weekend. I want to get it done this weekend. So uh, if you want to participate in a new contest, uh, that could be pretty helpful too. All right. Uh, okay, it's time for the contest. So let's see how many people we have. We have, I'll just go by the names of people. I'm going to do a, let's see, how do we do a random name picker? No, that's not going to work. We need a random, not random selection tool, random choice generator. Is there something that I can... Ideally, I, pick, I put in the names that I see in chat, and then it picks it, and it, we'd see it online. It would be so cool. Here we go. Great. So we're going to pick one. It's going to be a unique random selection. All right, here we go. I'm going to look in chat. I'm going to scroll up to the top. So at the very beginning, we have Melanie. Wait, who's who's in chat now? Can everyone, can everyone say something if you have access to chat? It looked like it was a comma separated list. So people were talking recently. Mawin, D, Peleg chatted recently. Ralph, I think is still here. I just don't know about Melanie. I guess I haven't, didn't see anything super recently from her. So I don't know if she's still here. Melanie's still here, yay. All right, cool. I think we've got uh, all the names that I see. Yes, if, if I'm missing you, Shout now or forever hold your peace. So we've got nice. Excellent. Okay, let's do it. So I think I'm gonna do random select and you're gonna oh wait it what's this one? Specific random selection. No 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 no. We want this. Here we go. Drum roll. Brrr. Where did it go? Did you see anything happen? Where's the answer? Did I miss it? I don't see anything. <laughs> oh, 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 here it is. It's over on the left. This website is garbage. <laughs> it's got so much stuff. Mowen, congratulations. Let me, uh, everyone else saw it except me. I was like, I felt like the page shifted, but there's so much garbage on this page that I couldn't even find it. <laughs> All right, Mowen, congratulations. So Mowen, this is another thing. I need your, I need your email address. Uh, you can just email it to me. You don't need to share it in chat. Uh, I need your, you to email me so that I have your email address so I can send you, uh, a ticket to the remote design week. All right, congratulations. Claps. And I'll just say thanks to everyone for uh, hanging out with me tonight. Hopefully I uh, had some fun. We checked out this new product. Uh, we 
played around with Figma's auto layouts. We learned some tricks for auto layouts and we've got some ideas to uh, share with this e even T uh, company on Product Hunt to hopefully uh, help them have even more success. So thanks again, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you again next week. So until then, happy designing y'all.